Junas Kambarage Nyerere was born on April 13, 1922 in Butiama, Tanganyika, to a local Zanaki chief called Nyerere Burito. At the age of 12, he began his education at the government primary school in Musoma, walking 26 miles each day to attend classes. He completed his schooling a year later. He was then transferred to Tabora Boys Government Secondary School in 1943 and later moved on to Makere University in Uganda for a certificate in education. In 1949, he became the first Tanganyikan to study in Britain where he obtained a Master's of Arts in History and Economics at the University of Edinburgh. In 1954, he developed the Tanganyika African National Union which grouped together nationalist factions towards an agenda for independence and self-reliance for the country. Nyerere was forced by the colonial authorities to choose between his teaching career and his interest in political activities. He was reported as saying that he was a schoolmaster by choice and a politician by accident. In due course, he entered the Legislative Council in 1958 to become the Chief Minister in 1960. A year later, Tanganyika was granted internal self-government and Nyerere became Prime Minister. Nyerere's integrity, his ability as a political orator and organizer, and his readiness to work with different groupings was a significant factor to achieving independence without bloodshed. In this, he was helped by the cooperative attitude of the last British governor, Sir Richard Turnbull. God save the Queen would be replaced by God bless Africa. Tanganyika got full independence in December 1961 and a year later he was elected president of the republic in 1962. Head of state is a head of state. Uh, if, if you cough, people say that fellow is coughing and, and, uh, and then you are advised as head of a state. And you are during his political career, Nyerere grew to become one of the most respected and a leading figure in Africa through his messages of peace, unity, and his commitment to the liberation of the African people. He was instrumental in the creation of the Organization of African Unity and made his country the headquarters of the liberation movements in the continent. Nyerere believed in the gradual approach of the African unity through regional blocs. He was so determined to build the East African Federation that he offered to delay the independence of Tanganyika so that the three East African countries, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanganyika, would attain independence on the same day as a collective entity in order to unite under one government. Unfortunately, the leaders in the other two countries did not reciprocate his feelings. Nyerere never gave up. In 1964, he engineered the Union of Tanganyika and Zanzibar, the first such union of independent countries on the African continent, and he remained committed to the goal of African unity on a continental scale until his last days. The East Africa Community was founded in 1967 as an economic association of East African countries. It began with a declaration of intent between Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda to improve trade, communications, and economic development. Due to political differences and foreign interference, the community broke in 1977. However, a new East African community, which includes Tanzania, Kenya, and Uganda, was officially relaunched in 1999 in Tanzania's northern town of Arusha. A few years later, Burundi and Rwanda also joined. As president, Nyerere had to steer a difficult cause. By the late 1970s, Tanzania was one of the world's poorest countries. Like many others, it was suffering from a severe foreign debt, a decrease in foreign aid. 
The emerging of classes of the haves and the poor concerned him. Instead of leaders becoming servants, they developed the appetite for wealth. This led to Nyerere to come with a new policy to correct the growing gap. The Arusha Declaration 1967 was a blueprint for establishing a more egalitarian society which placed emphasis on self-reliance and avoided dependence upon foreign loans. The strategy entailed state ownership of major means of production and important services. Consequently, commercial banks, mills, commercial farms and leading import and export houses were nationalized. More importantly, he introduced the leadership code. Nyerere, who was fondly known as Mwalim, the teacher, argued that Tanzania had to move from being a nation of individual peasant producers, adopting the incentives and the ethics of the capitalist system. Instead, gradually building a nation of Yamaha villages where the people would cooperate directly in small groups, which would further produce and equally share the benefits. We collectivized agriculture in Tanzania. We never did. There are a bunch of fools who keep saying, you know, you collectivize agriculture and that is why. We never did. And the Arusha Declaration states very clearly that if you are going to build socialism, it has to be voluntary. And we define a Ujamaa village, we say it's, it's a village where people live together, work together for the common good. They cannot live together, work together for the common good if, if you are going to force them. They, will not, they, won't, won't, they won't work together. So that is the first thing. We, we have not tried to force collectivization. Never. There was never a movement of forcing people to, to put their farm together and work together. So you have to persuade. And since you are persuading people, we envisage from the very beginning that it was going to take a long time. And it, it's a process, and it's a process. We can take you now to villages in Tanzania where there is complete collectivization, complete, voluntary and complete. And we can take you to areas, villages, most of them in Tanzania, where there is very little, very little collectivization. Most of the peasants are still working on their own farms. Fine, we have no problem. What we want is to help the, the peasant on his, his plot, to produce the maximum and we realize beyond that they will have to cooperate they'll have to cooperate together julius nyerere believed in the people-centered socialism humanness in its fullest sense rather than wealth creation must come first societies became better places through the development of people the policy focus was on human development and self-reliance which brought some success in key areas, notably in health, education, and political identity. He believed that for long, the economy of Tanzania would depend on agriculture and animal husbandry as a means by which Tanzanians could live without depending on foreign assistance if they used their land properly. Land was a basis of human life, and all Tanzanians would use it as a valuable investment for future development. The government endeavored to see to it that it was being used for the benefit of the whole nation and not for the benefit of one individual or just a few people. It was the responsibility of the government and the cooperative societies to see to it that the people got the necessary tools, training and leadership in modern methods of agriculture. To implement the policy of self-reliance effectively, the people had to be taught the meaning of self-reliance in its practice to become self-sufficient in food, shelter, and reliable social services. 